Guess where I'm at. Where are you at, baby? Well, look, look at, look at me. I see lots of seats and rows and big That's lights. That's right. I'm are you perched. in a stadium? I'm in a Ooh. stadium, an arena. All right. Ooh. The all, the all state arena. Nice. Outside of Chicago, Illinois. Excellent. Here on the the second stop of the Weezer, Flaming Lips, Dinosaur Junior tour. I love it. I yep. love it. I'm back I got on to tour. have a sneak peek. I got to have a little sneak peek of it. You were there. You were there well, at the I mean, XL I was there. Center. Yeah. I didn't get to see the whole show, so I say it's a sneak peek, but yeah, um, half show. So, so I, I've been telling you about my, you know, hooking up with some old friends on the tour. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. I, I kind of, I told them that they could do a little uh, announcing for the, for the podcast and, uh, uh, that's exciting. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Hey, it's me, <laughs> Stuffy Bunks. I'm here to welcome Lou back on tour. Lou, remember me, old Stuffy? I do. Stuffy <laughs> Bunks. Mm. Uh, of course you do. Well, me and Willie the Whistling Vet missed you, and we're <laughs> happy to get back to giving you the weirdest night sleeps of your life. <laughs> you tell him, Willie, before <laughs> he puts duct tape over you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, um, I think I picked up on that old friend that was that Stuffy Bunks. Stuffy Bunks. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm we're on a bus and I'm sleeping in my bunk. Your stuffy bunk. Yeah. <laughs> and then was it with the, the vent thing? Whis- uh, Willie, the whistling vent. Uh, which I'd, I'd never been proper, properly introduced to Willie, mm-hmm. and because uh, there's there's always a whistling vent. Because <laughs> the air comes and goes, it's a little um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a thing for me being back. Look at in you, the bunk. glamorous rock star, just stuck in your little coffin, just barreling down. It's so funny, away. Yeah, and it's it's <laughs> it's sort of a, a traveling infirmary because there's always people coughing. Yeah, yeah, snorting and coughing and farting, snoring and farting, sneezing. And, and there's like, you know, shoes. You, you wake up in the morning next to someone's shoes. I sleep on the... By your nose. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I sleep at the bottom, on the bottom mm-hmm. bunks, just generally because I don't want to be thrown from a top yeah. bunk. Sure. But I get... So I'm down there with the shoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, you... You know, it could seem glamorous, I suppose. You know, it's like I'm on Pick an arena poison, tour. poison. Which bunk? Yeah. I know. Look, I mean, look, this is a great tour. This is like a, a nationwide tour. We're opening for... the the wonderful Weezer Mm -hmm. and there are thousands and thousands of fans and uh, they're lovely fans. Yeah. You know, there's catering backstage. I gotta say Weezer fans were really nice in St. Paul. Yeah, Good showing St. Paul. Nice work. Y'all you're kind. You're, you know, considerate folks, your Weezer flaming lips, dinosaur junior fans. You showed up, you were fucking awesome. Now I'm, I'm back on tour with the Flaming Lips. I toured with them back in 1999 for a couple months. They're great. Yeah. Everyone, around, everyone in their, their crew is great. So great. They're fun. Yeah. They love what they do. I and know. it seems like the Weezer crew pretty much follow suit with that. So I know. They were really all like good. smiling and waving at us when we walked by him backstage. I was like, that's nice. You know? Yeah. And uh, That's just nice. But, you know... um, but we're in a bus. We're in the back in the bus, kind of rough. Well, you got to get from one place to another. You know, it's just what it is, you right? Do. You, you yeah. do. You got to get from one place to another. You're not on a train. You're not horse and carriage. It's just the bus. And yeah, it's, yeah. I, I don't want to complain. Don't complain. <laughs> I, I really, I really don't want to complain. But um, here's a hold just on. explain. <laughs> yeah, don't complain. Explain. 
It's really the whistling vest. Hello. Hello. Stuffy here again. <laughs> On this tour around, your driver's slow and steady. Yeah, that's good. It's a little okay. too steady for old Stuffy. <laughs> I think it does a man good to wake up feeling like you're strapped on the back of a metal centipede weaving through a construction site on a cliff at 90 miles an hour with a blindfold on and a three-sided coffin on a cliff at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> you're hot, you're freezing. <laughs> You're waking up shaking or sweating, not knowing where you are. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> We've always been there for you, Lou. Right, <laughs> Willie? Uh, Stuffy's a bit of a road dog. My God, he he is literally the definition of a road dog. <laughs> he, he, he comes with it the is. bus, and mm -hmm. we've actually had this bus before. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. it's a purple bus, which is fitting. I know, I love that. I love purple the purple is, bus. Purple is yep. the, the band's color. Totally. You know. Totally. Hey, Jay do you have any purple socks? You got to wear yeah. some purple socks on stage. I did, honey. Oh my gosh! So I'm wearing, no, I, I have purple and green socks on. I have one purple sock and one green sock. Good. We got yeah. to see some friends when we were in St. Paul, and um, our friend Barrett came to the show with her son Roy. And I got a text afterward, and he said he liked your socks. So that's my thing. Yeah, as so I said, I said that's Lou's thing, and that. Yeah, cute? when I I I wear my uh, my orthopedic shoes during the day, my hokas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And gotta then protect I can't, those feet. I can't possibly wear hokas on stage, simply because. <laughs> Um, our 14 year old son uh, ridicules me ruthlessly about my hokas mm -hmm. and I can't wear them on stage and I don't like to wear think like logos on stage so much. So I've been just wearing my socks because that really is the healthiest thing to do for my feet. So I am yeah. right now I have a pair of uh, one purple sock and one green sock. I, I love represent it. The dinosaur junior colors. And I did wear that in St. Paul and I've got the same socks on today. Good. We'll see how, how long they last. I do have another pair just like this. Uh-huh. Purple and a green. Yeah. Pair. But you know what? You do need kind of a neon green because dinosaur is kind of a little more of a neon green. So keep your oh. eye out. Keep your eye out. I'll keep my eye out for some more like, you know, neon greens. But yeah. Yeah. But so we were back in St. Paul uh, for the beginning of the tour. Mm. Oh, my gosh. We have so much to talk about. I don't even know if we have time today probably not but you know we were back in st paul for a few days uh to be there for the beginning of the weezer flaming lips dinosaur junior show because i am from st paul i am a st paul girl and even though Could my born and raised i was born in minneapolis raised in st paul yes but twin i'm cities. a st paul twin cities gal so um we just thought, heck, that's an opportunity for us, right? To hit some spots, see some friends, and be there for the show. And uh, we did all of that. We did all of those things. What was what was the most important event that we attended? <laughs> the event that... Well... <laughs> When I've, I've, you know, you've talked you you've talked my ear off about the, the Minnesota State Fair for years since you know, we were when we were friends. You talked about it and mm -hmm. and uh, and so when when we began traveling together, you and I, mm -hmm. when we began sharing a suitcase, we started to go to the Twin Cities, and you took me yeah. to the fair, and I've been to the fair. I think this was my fourth time. I think this, it was your this. fourth time. Yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds right. Um, that's not enough, but that's that's a good start. That's a respectable start, I'll say. Actually, it's a respectable start. I respect it. But I can I just be honest with my fair, Minnesota State Fair, that is, if you're like, what fair? There's only one. It's the great Minnesota get-together. It's the Minnesota fair. Nothing else compares. So now that that's gotten out of the way, um, I think it was very busy. It was a little busy, guys, and 
uh, when you have an eight-year-old, it can be overwhelming. Some, some people might find that overwhelming. Some adults might find that overwhelming. And I looked at the population, the visitors for that day. It was 175,889 people. Uh-huh. Which is, I mean, just wrap your head around that. That's, a, that's, that's, that's like one day. 80, that's like 80,000 more than we're walking last time we were there. There was 80,000 more people there. Yes. So Easily. our day was basically moving upstream. We were like <laughs> moving swimming upstream. Swimming against. We were swimming against, somehow <sighs> swimming against the current, no matter where we Every were time. walking. But just as, I mean, a sea of humanity. T- truly. I mean, raw. Raw Speaking humanity. of raw impressions, guys. Raw humanity. Ooh. Yeah, it's a real, what's the word, swath? It's a real, you just get to see all kinds. All kinds are right there represented, um, swimming, fighting, fighting those waters together. And and God bless. We all made it. Thank God. But, we you did, know, but it, it was did. tiring. It did. It did detract. It did, and I'm going to be honest. It actually, it did detract from the experience. I am. Are you I'm going to be honest about this. I'm going to be raw because I don't. We didn't talk. We didn't. We did not. We didn't do this before. Yeah. We we didn't really have this moment while we were together, mm-hmm. and just to, to look at each, just really have a real honest conversation and go. That detracted. Correct. From it did. The great Minnesota get together. There was mm-hmm. the together was it was just. <laughs> There was a lot of together, a lot do of people want, in our I, together. Do I say too much? Do I say mm-hmm. there was too many people? There's this, this awesome song called Too Many People by a man called The Leaves mm-hmm. in the 1960s. And it goes, too many people. <laughs> and I kept thinking of yeah. that. I, I feel it so much. I, and I feel like since I am a Minnesotan, born and raised, uh, and with a lifetime of going to the fair, it's okay for me to be... Um, Critical. I'm not critical. I'm being honest. I'm just being honest and You're real not because complaining. It, I'm You're not complaining. Explaining. I'm explaining. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's my new thing. I'm not complaining. Da, da. I'm explaining. So <laughs> also, will it keep me from going back? No. I will be back. I will always be back, guys. I will always be back. You always she have loves my heart. The fair. But you can't she keep lo- me away. She still loves the fair. Yeah, it's a uh, it's yeah, it's time to tumultuous relationship, but I keep going back. I well, but I did I, get my corn dog. Yeah, got my delicious corn dog. corn dog. Guys, and it was I great. had one of the I had one of the funniest things mm-hmm. ever Truly. happen to me. Yes, something happened there that like I'm I'm almost I'm nervous because I want to explain. Can should I share this story with people? You could should I share you, with you again. There might be some editing that needs to be involved. We'll see um, as I help you through explaining it, maybe. Uh, okay. So we were we were about five hours in to our Minnesota truly. State Fair stay. We were there, you guys, a long time. We were, we were in the far corner of the fair at this point. We were in the international part of yep. the fair. Yep. Near some, the Liney uh, Lodge. Near the Liney Lodge. There was some Native American dancing going on on stage. Yes. You and I both had just had... Uh, Four taquitos a piece. Fantastic taquitos, oh, right? Really good taquitos. Yep. Really good taquitos. They were. Um, so you were off. I was standing there waiting for you. And I saw this woman, mm-hmm. um, middle-aged woman, mm-hmm. who appeared to be in distress. Oh. And she was down on the, you know, on the street, the walkway, where all the people are walking back and forth. I'm kind of up a little bit near, in the... Uh, what is that building where all the, the crop art is and all that the stuff? The agriculture building. The agriculture building. The ag sort of building. A, the ag building, which is kind of on an incline. So I'm, I got, I'm looking down. This woman, I see her. She's got one hand on a black trash can mm-hmm. and the other hand, other arm, on a black recycling container. And she's sort of So she's standing between the, between the two being held and up? She's, and she's sort of holding herself up. On two recycling on the, bins. One hand on the okay. trash, the other on the tr- recycling and it looks like she's sort of falling down oh god and she's mouthing what i can i can tell is help and oh. i look to my side thinking that she's actually there must be somebody she's motioning towards or speaking to but then i realized it was me she was asking you me for help. help and i kind of pointed at oh. myself i'm like me 
She's like, help. And then oh I could God. actually hear it. I, I could hear her voice now emerging from the, oh. the rattle around us. Oh, my God. Like, help me. Help she me. She looked like, at oh, you, me? Lou Barlow, She looked at me help? and she said, she did. And then she, she's like, I need help. I need help. And I'm like, she's kind of going down. I'm like, she's going to hit Holy the shit. ground. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah, I was worried. So I like kind of yeah. rushed right down. And then I was thinking, you know, I was like, I could really help her, help her right now. This could be really important. This is this a could be moment. my Samaritan moment. Yeah. Because, you know, being in all of those people, being in that, that the sea of humanity, mm -hmm. the crush of humanity, I, it really was making me think, like, I need to do things to help people in my <laughs> life. Mm -hmm. You know, I live a very kind of an indulgent life, a bit self-involved. And I was thinking a lot about service while I was walking around in the midst of 170,000 people and thinking how mm. we can really help each other as humans and, and also the miracle of the way that we all function together in great yes. numbers like that. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking a bit about that. So I'm like, well, I was like, this is my moment. This is sort of the climax of the day. This is where mm -hmm. I could help this woman to a medical tent. I could dial 911. I could look for help. Um, so I rush up to her. I'm like, she's like, please help me, help me. And she's still perched. Oh and I went gosh. over and I actually And it was her. also I, pretty warm. Well, not not oh, crazy, really right? Hot. So she could have I been mean, having heat stroke. Exactly. She looked it, <sighs> a lot of things could be wrong in this situation. And I was worried about her. And I was ready to help. And I went and I actually like put my hands on both of her shoulders. I'm like, can I help you? What do you need? Mm-hmm. And she looked directly. That's a really good question, actually. Yeah. Good. What do I'm, you need? I like that. What do you need? What do you need from me right now? What do we need to do? What do we need to do? This is an emergency. I'm like thinking emergency, but I'm like, I'm calm. I'm calm. Mm -hmm. She looks me right in the eyes and she said, where are the foot long hot dogs? <laughs> That's what she said. I need a foot long hot dog. And I actually knew exactly where they were because I had just passed it. You know, like a big yellow sign with like a red foot long hot dog on top of the, the kiosk, you know, there in the. And I said, oh, they're, they're just over there. And she looked up and she, you know, she saw the stand for the foot long uh -huh. hot dogs. And she said, oh, OK, and then she was like breathing heavily, too. And she uh -huh. said, I just I just got I got to sit down. And I was like I was poised at that point to like ease her down to the curb. Whoa. This is how, but she said, no, she just then walked up the incline and sat herself on a bench. Oh, and I was like, okay, so, so I, I guess a job, so, that, my job was so done. That was it. She just needed visual confirmation of where she needed visual confirmation of where the oh, foot long hot dogs were. <laughs> and then she was going to rest. And I thought maybe she was going to rest for a long time. I was like, oh, she's probably got to really take a break here. Yeah. Maybe she'll even decide that hey. she doesn't need a foot long hot dog. <laughs> Maybe she'll have some water. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. You know, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Definitely so then stay you, hydrated. So then you and Izzy kind of emerge from the crowd. And I look at you and then I look back and she's not even on the bench anymore. She's already on her way to the footlong hot dogs. Mm. And then, you know. And then we passed the footlong you know, hot dogs. Yeah, and I, I was, this was cool, y'all, as I was able to point out to Adele, this woman. It's like, there she is. And she and seemed. Then, she looked okay. She probably she got her hot dog. She was actually sitting on a bench then, waiting for her footlong. Was she waiting for the footlong then? I don't know. She was staring at the booth, though. She was directly at the booth, sitting Maybe on a bench <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> she was just in another stage of towards. I was. This I thought really, at that point it had already been like five or ten minutes. So she. Sure. I figured she'd probably already got her footlong. And because the footlong hot dog was not one of the most the desire. There was many desired. See, that's the thing about it. The cliche, and that's true, is that the, the Minnesota State Fair is where you go to get everything fried, like everything. And on a stick. And, and on a stick. They'll, they'll, yep. they'll fry a grilled cheese for you. They'll mm -hmm. fry a Snickers bar. They'll fry hot dish. A, yep. They'll fry anything. So, the, so just a plain old footlong hot dog is not among the most desired. I mean, there was a line. There was, remember that line? It was like a half a mile long to it get was two something hours called. Long. To called fry to get fried ranch, deep fried ranch, deep fried ranch, which I guess was just ranch dressing in a fried pocket. 
Is that what that I know, was? I know. It was like, it was a triangle of deep red branch. Guys, it, it I looked like shit. Home. I saw them, like, because, you know, we saw people, I'm like, what is that <laughs> fucking, what are they, hell are they eating? It looked like, uh, <laughs> it looked, it looked like, like the fish and chips that I had at the airport the other day that was just like, I'm like, ugh. Brutal. It almost, com- almost put me off fish and chips, which is tough because fish and chips, kind of a perfect food. You love those. I do. But they're just like, the, they were just these horrible, dark fried pockets, but apparently full of ranch dressing. And people were waiting for two hours <laughs> to get that. So we, you know, anyway, so <sighs> the point being that there was no mm-hmm. wait for this woman to get her foot long hot dog. So she might have been just sitting there contemplating getting another Damn. one. I you know? really respect her, man. She went old school. She was like, you know what? Just give me a foot long. Because when I was little, hmm. okay, this is wild. But when I was little, growing to the fair with my dad, um, I would always get, and this is a lot of dog, guys. Remember, I'm from Minnesota. I would always get a corn dog, hmm. a pronto pup, and a foot long. What's the difference day. between a. Oh. Okay, the batter. I know what you're asking. What's the difference between a corn dog and a prano pup? The prano yes. pup is a flower batter. The corn dog, obviously, corn batter. And then a foot long. Ooh. That shit's in a bun. Okay, guys? You know. So. Oh, yeah, the, the foot long for that's sure. Just Although a just a classic in a bun. Hmm. A foot long bun. I've had it many times. Wow. <laughs> okay. In my mouth at the fair. <laughs> That sounded so dirty. I've had that many times in my mouth at the fair. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Triple hot dog day at the How fair. How many people are having? <laughs> she had a little hat trick at the fair. How many people mm-hmm. are fucking at the fair, huh? How do you think? How many people are? There's, there's, the there's, is there any room to do it there? We're all like in you're, top, you're going, on top of each other. There duh. are so many people. You do it through the yield mill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. They have, they have this ride there. This is This is like... <laughs> This ride, I mean, every time I, I've been on it several times, and each time I'm like, this is really dumb. And I mean, in a good way. Please don't use that word. In a That's good way. In a good way. Take that back. So, so it's a water ride. Like you get on a little boat and it takes you down, a, you know, a water tube. It's a tunnel. A tunnel. In, in the yield mill. And it's called yield mill. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and then you go by these like little tableaus Tight. that they've set up, these little, yeah. you know, like, but like weird stuff, like Bambi, like a know, bunny rabbit, like weird yeah. kind of stuff that looked like they, they put it there in 1955. I mean, painted idyllic sort of cartoonish nature <laughs> scenes, but there's only two of them there's in like the whole ride. And mm-hmm. then, and they're actually like in front of these scenes. It's like, it's like chicken wire in front of the scenes. Yeah, it's almost and otherwise as if you're it's just, like metal in front of it. It is. It's chicken wire. <laughs> and, and other than that, you're just floating down in the dark. And then I had Pitch the realization, it's like, this is where if you were young. Um, in the 1950s and 60s. And 60s. Yes. Um, or now, you could fuck. You could actually fuck in the yield mill. Fuck in the yield mill? I was thinking kiss. You were saying this is a kissing tunnel. Well, you were just like, wondering if people were fucking at the fair. I'm like, well, <laughs> if there was, and, and where could they go? I'm saying they could fuck on the yield mill if they were really, if they really what? wanted to. They'd have to be really careful, though, because you're in a boat in water. You could tip the boat if she's like, okay, I got to get up. If she's whatever, I'm just saying. Well, if they were a really industrious couple, they could really figure it out. My God. Anyway, they, they would okay. have, there's, it's a limited amount of time. But you, you could would, certainly you do give have, a blowjob going through. Definitely. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Hand job. I, mean, I don't know if it's a really long enough. I'm not sure. <laughs> But it depends. depends. But if you're depends. like, if you're 17, depends. 18, nope. Yeah, yeah. I was playing Bam. time. Bam. <laughs> anyway. Oh my God. Well, you were no. wondering where people could fuck in the fair, and I just wanted to bring up. Thank yes, you. not only could you just make out in the ye old mill, which would be the easiest thing to do. Fun. And the, and the safest yeah. thing to do, I suppose, because you, you know. Anyway. Sure. So yeah. That was, oh so my goodness. I think I did a pretty good job telling that story. I think you did a really good job, and I, I don't think, think I have to you edit did anything. help that woman. No, that was perfection. <laughs> and true, it was true. It was true. It's totally true. Yeah, I mean, and our we were also with our friend Jeff, uh, one of my like friends from junior high, who I've known for forever since junior high, and he was our he was our guest that day. He hung out with us all day, and 
He bared witness to. Oh my to God, what are they doing? Oh, they're what? moving the stage. Oh my Look God. at that. Wow. So now they have set up, they have set oh, up Weezer's sound shit. system, and now they are pushing the stage across the middle of the what would be the hockey rink, actually, or the basketball, or whatever they do here. Whoa! So they're actually moving the they stage just into moved, place. They actually, I I didn't realize that they construct the stage on one side of the arena and then move it, and sort of then attach it to the uh, to the stage rigging to the the whole setup that Weezer have. This is a I talked to Rivers a little bit last night at dinner, and he's really wow. psyched. This is his arena rock moment. He's he feels like he's finally he's done something that he's always that. You know, he's basically, it's fulfilling a, a childhood dream for him. And he said as much, almost word for word. This is a stage show that he, of his that. dreams, of his dreams. Because I think before they've oh. always been a pretty basic band. Like they, they throw the big W behind them and they play their songs. Very unpretentious band. But this time it's like they really brought this, they're bringing a real show. And of course we have the Flaming Lips with us who, oh. They're so all fun. about the yep. stage show. They always have been. They used to yeah. be a stage show even when they were a stripped down three piece. They are OG clubs. stage show. Mm-hmm. OG. They used to do it DIY. Total. They they have just progressed through time with their incredible stage show. And uh, I've yet to see the Weezer one because we keep leaving early. I know because of the bus tour. It's just it's no offense to Weezer at all. It just has to do with the scheduling of how oh. it all works. Logistics, guys. It's crazy on the road. Um, oh, you know what I was going to say? I wanted to say. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hopefully no I one got say, hurt. I know. I think that's them dropping the stage down into place. Hmm. Um, I'm happy for, we- uh, for Weezers. For Rivers. Weezers. The Rivers. Hey, that's something I found out last night, too. Weezer is actually his dad's nickname for him when he was a kid. I love Bill it. Weezer, which is amazing. Hot tip. Hot tip. Do Lincoln, Weezer I mean, fans know that? Yeah. You know. But yeah. I, I feel really happy for him because um, I really enjoyed meeting him. He's really nice. And I see, I could see kind of the childhood joy, you know, like in his eyes. He looks so excited. And in that really sweet, innocent, kid-like way where they are, like, getting this dream fulfilled. Mm-hmm. And I'm really, really psyched to witness that. I love seeing people getting to realize something that's so meaningful to them. It's just... Yeah, it's got, actually, you know, it's 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 uh, with Wayne, too. Wayne really totally. exhibits that when he's, like, when he's in full Wayne yes. mode. Yes. When he's like, he's got the crowd and he's talking because he's a very funny guy, a very dry. He's a sense wonderful of humor. showman. Wonderful showman. He's like whipping lights around. He's like, he, I sort of equate like the Flaming Lips is like, if if you decided to like, like you go to Home Depot, the, the way that <laughs> it's like, this is a band that started off like by going to hardware stores to make their their light show, and uh, now it's a, now they've got those huge fucking inflatable robots incredible yeah incredible izzy was obsessed with the robots um izzy really liked the flaming lips she was literally uh that was amazing she's never shown any interest in rock i mean very little interest in rock music not that the flaming lips are rock i mean the flaming lips are a pretty nuanced band there's a lot of influences in there yes she don't use jelly that's a straight up rock tune for sure yep but when you get to you made me realize and stuff. This is stuff is oh more my god, really yeah, amazing. Uh, well, it's so know. atmospheric, right? I mean, I think yep. she got she got captivated. She got brought in to the essence. The, the that was so cool. I was like, whoa, here we go. Although I have to say, she on the ride to the airport the next day, we had to say goodbye to you and we had to keep going to Chicago. We went we went back to Massachusetts so as you could start school, we could get back to life. Um. She was she was near tears, uh, just thinking about how she really thought that it would be more fair if the bands would just learn how to take some turns and not have it always be Weezer at the top and Flaming Lips and then Dinosaur Jr. To her, it was a real injustice that it was always the same lineup because she said, "You're all good, you're all good," and and then she also wanted the bands names to each take turns being bigger on the poster it was so funny she's really like this is just not fair and um oh. i know we rivers and wayne now i know them and i think they would agree with me 
that we should change it up and it would be fair. And I was like, okay, well, that's just not what's happening this time, sweetie. And she just said, but don't they like daddy's band? And I said, they love daddy's band. It has nothing to do with how much they like it, honey. My goodness. She just, her little heart, she was, she was aching for you. And she just, she was feeling that, uh, you know, I don't know, that, uh, that opener vibe. It was really funny. Like, oh, but you know what? You guys killed it. And Rolling Stone even oh, said so in that beautiful article. Yeah, there was a review for the show in the Rolling Stone. It's, it's a, w- Willie the Whistling Vent. <laughs> Thank you for listening to, to this episode of Raw Impressions. I'm Steffi Bunks back out on tour. With Lou Barlow. It's my great pleasure. We got you for the next month, Lou. (laughs) (laughs) Stop being whistling, whistling, Willie. I guess that's it. This, that's this has been Lou Barlow reporting live <laughs> from the Weezer Deer. Amazing. <clears throat> Look amazing. Look at yeah. that. Those of you watching on YouTube can now see little the sneak, arena. Little sneaky peekies. The Allstate Arena here outside of Chicago, Illinois. I'll be back with more from the Weezer Deer. <laughs> Raw impressions. <laughs> <laughs>